Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be doing a starter setup guide for the Trim UI Smart Pro. And I'll show you from scratch as well as if you already have it and you just want to update to the newest version. Now, the very first thing you should do, especially if you bought it with an SD card from a retailer, is clone the SD card to a better branded SD card. I'm going to leave instructions for you on how to do so. It's a written step-by-step -step guide on my website, and that would be the best way. And the whole reason you're doing this is the unbranded SD cards that come with these devices are low quality and prone to failure, and it just helps you alleviate any issues that might arise. On top of that though, I would highly suggest that you replace the ROMs as well, as you're going to be running into a lot of issues with the stock ROMs. Pokemon doesn't save, games will freeze, and so much more. I'll show you in this guide where the ROMs are on the SD card and how to find them, and then it'll be up to you to replace them with some good ROMs. If you need help sourcing actual ROMs, I'll leave a link in the description to another video where I talk about that a little bit more in depth. But now you can start to see why the general recommendation is to not buy the SD card with these devices because of the low quality, unbranded SD card, and the bad ROMs. So now you know for the future. Alright, so we're ready to go, let's jump right in. The very first thing we want to do is update the firmware on your device. So, we're going to be headed to the TrimUI GitHub page, and you want to grab the latest release. And you want the file that starts with TrimUI underscore TG5040. As of this video, the latest release is 1.0.4. Next, we need to either update or set up the SD card. And this will depend on if you're starting from scratch, or if you're upgrading from an existing SD card that you've been using. Head to the TrimUI GitHub page again, and the links are all in my description in case you need them. This time, grab the latest release, and if you're going to be starting from scratch, you want the base underscore package file. And for those of you that have a working SD card already, you want the incremental option file. Either way, starting from scratch or upgrading, you'll now have two different 7-zip files, and you'll need to extract them using 7-zip. So go ahead and do that now. Now, for those of you that are starting from scratch, you need to format the SD card as FAT32. Everybody else can skip this next step and go to the next timestamp. So, for those of you starting from scratch, we're going to be using Rufus to do this, and we can download the portable version. Connect your SD card to your PC using a branded SD card reader, and I have recommendations in the description. Open Rufus. Make sure that the device is your SD card. It should match the same size. Change boot selection to non-bootable. And make sure that the file system is FAT32 or large FAT32. Go ahead and click start. When it's done, you'll have a blank FAT32 formatted SD card. Then for both starting from scratch and updating, copy the .awimg file from the other zip that we extracted onto the root of the SD card. Now for both starting from scratch and those updating, we need to copy the contents of the zips that we extracted. So, for those starting from scratch, copy the contents of the base underscore package zip file that you extracted onto the SD card. For those updating, copy the contents of the incremental zip that you extracted onto the SD card and overwrite anything that it asks you to. Go ahead and eject and insert the SD card into your TrimUI Smart Pro. Press and hold the volume minus and power button at the same time, and after some seconds, you'll see a green loading bar. Release the power and then the volume minus buttons when you do. The device will install the firmware, and then it'll automatically restart, and you'll be in the operating system. Now that we're inside the operating system, we can power down by pushing and holding the power button, and then eject and insert your SD card back into your PC. 
Let's look at how to add or remove ROMs and BIOS files now. Head inside of the ROMs folder, and you should see a bunch of folders for all of the systems that this device supports. It should be very self-explanatory at this point, but you want to move your ROMs into each system folder, so the corresponding folder for each one. If you've been using the stock SD card and those ROMs, I would highly suggest replacing them at this point, like I talked about in the beginning. For the BIOS files location, head to the RetroArch folder, then .RetroArch, and open System. Inside of this folder is where you would put your BIOS files. Now, for those of you with the stock SD card, you can keep the BIOS files that it comes with. They're generally okay. But for everybody else, starting from scratch, this is where you would put your BIOS files. That's basically it for things to do here. Let's pop the SD card back into the device and we'll turn it on. The first thing we want to do now is enable performance mode. So, on the bottom of your device is an FN switch. You want to have this in the right position, so the complete opposite of FN. Then, in the operating system, head to App, FN key, and enable CPU performance mode here. If you added games and you don't see them, head to the Game tab at the top, then push the Menu button on the device bottom left, and select Refresh ROMs. If you want to change the core or emulator being used for a specific game, highlight the game in the game list and push X. You'll get a list of available cores or emulators that you can change for that specific game. Keep in mind that it doesn't save this right now, so you'll have to do this every time you open the game. If you're like me and you hate the shaders and overlays that come pre-installed for most systems right now, let me show you how to remove them. Jump into a game that has them applied, and then push the menu button on the bottom left, head to advanced menu, and now scroll down to on-screen overlay, and uncheck display overlay. Head back and scroll down to shaders, and uncheck video shaders. Head back and go to Overrides, and now save Core Overrides. By doing all of this, it'll remove the shaders and overlays for that specific core, so you'll have to do this for each system, basically, and only once, thankfully. One last thing that I would suggest, head to Setting at the top, and then System, and then Calibrate Joystick. Press A, then select the left joystick first, and follow the instructions on screen. Just rotate the stick. Go ahead and do the right stick after. Trust me, don't skip this, you want to calibrate these or you're going to have a bad time with these sticks. As far as other settings go, like the LEDs and volume and all of that, you can find everything under settings, so just go ahead and play with the settings and the system section, and you can scroll around and see what they have there, connect to Wi-Fi, connect to Bluetooth, and all of that fun stuff. But that's kind of basically it here, and I wanted to just do a quick video on how to start from scratch, and how to update, as I saw a lot of people commenting on how to do this. Have fun with the new update as well. There's now Moonlight, and there's Bluetooth audio, and there's a lot more. They did a lot of great work here. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.